Uh, we are very pleased to have the support. And uh, Alpine Heath has offered uh, two vouchers uh, oh, for weekends at the great venue. So, Can I? Uh, you qualified to go to Alpine <laughs> Heath, but you can't be a, a participant in the quiz, unfortunately, in Bali. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a little bit like Oprah. You can all take away something if you get the questions right. So during the course of the next two days, we'll be doing some quizzes. You'll see a little uh, heading there saying gamification. We'll be loading some questions for you um, about some of the infographics, about uh, what people are saying, about some of the uh, individuals involved here. Mm. So do, um, do keep alert. Yeah. It's one way of keeping us... Uh, kind of vigilant to the content. Yeah. We don't want you to treat this as an MS Teams meeting with your camera off where you can do your chores, shopping and cooking <laughs> while you're pretending to be online. I'm sorry about that. I know we're all guilty of that <laughs> to an extent. I'm not looking at you, Mbali, for that. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, please, don't. <laughs> okay. Um, you'll also see on the left uh, event platform information, which is almost... And um, activity feed, you'll be able to add your comments and uh, anything you want to add there, in addition to the chat, which you also... ...see when you're on the live stream. And then the last uh, little button on the left is about the networking lounge. Yes. Bali, what do you think of that? I think it is absolutely amazing. Um, especially all living in this virtual world at this point. Um, so the networking lounge is actually quite interesting. It's actually quite fun. It's nice. You get to mingle with your colleagues. You get to mingle with your friends during the breakaways. Um, you can actually sit together and have lunch together yeah. virtually, obviously, yeah. um, in the networking lounge. So it has quite a nice um, feature that I would really recommend um, people actually make use of. So one of the uh, lab virtually has been that we don't get that chance to bump into colleagues yeah. in the parking lot or at the coffee station. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. It's difficult to gossip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, this feature on the app is just fantastic because yeah. as uh, have an explore of it and we'll create spaces for you during the breaks and also if we uh, are, are, some of our solution rooms uh, reach capacity and or you, you get a little bit bored with the discussions, you can go into the... Yeah the networking lounge and stand around a table and move your and, and go and talk nice to people. Thing. Yeah, and the nice thing about it as well, you can actually schedule um, an appointment yeah. to meet up with someone. So if there's another person that you are interested in um, having a chat with, getting to know a bit more about what they do, you can actually schedule an appointment or a meeting with them and then you can meet them in the networking lounge. So it's really great. I would really, really recommend that you just take a tour and try it out. You, you, you won't regret it. And in line with... Uh, all of this sort of digital age for IR social media. Um, if you are a tweeter um, and you want to use some handles and hashtags, um, and Bali, I'm going to ask you to correct me when I use the wrong words because <laughs> you're more uh, uh, good at these things than I am. But if you want to use, uh, if you want to tweet, we ask that you use the um, savings at work, and it's not with the at sign, but yeah. the savings at work. Yeah. Um, and also spending review conference. Yes. Those are our two handles that we're using. And I don't know what the right term is, Mbali, but we also want you to link to GTAC somehow. I don't know. Do you know how that works? Um. Anyway, those of you that know will know. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, GTAC will also be uh, uh, pushing through some of the uh, tweets as well. Yes, they will. Um, let me just say a few things before we get going on the platform as well. You know, this is the first time we're doing it. Yep. So I joke that uh, we're pretending to be, you know, Morning Live and <laughs> our heroes from, uh, the, you know, growing up watching Morning TV yeah. were these anchors on Morning Live. Even though it doesn't look like it, it's Mbali's first time to be um, on uh, uh, broadcasting and it's mine as well. I, I will stumble. <laughs> 
at times throughout I'm today. Paddling profusely underwater. <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem is they can see our feet, <laughs> so we can't even paddle. But um, we'd really like to invite you to join us in this pioneering event and to adopt an approach of curiosity yeah. about this new platform, uh, uh, compassion yeah. for the presenters. There'll be times when things go wrong. Um, we are doing a hybrid event, so we're bringing some people in live, we're bringing some people in through Zoom. Some are um, pre-recorded. Some are pre-recorded, so we've got a great tech team in the background who are doing all their magic, but we're likely to have one or two Glitch. moments where we'll start to paddle. You might even see our feet starting to yeah. go. Um, so please join us with that kind of compassionate uh, uh, stance uh, when that happens. And we ask the same for you, because you're all working from home. Mm -hmm. Some of you might be at your offices. Um, but unlike the old days when we used to drive to the office and have a chance to decompress, now it's just opening a door. Yeah. Um, and logging in. And logging in. Yeah. So <laughs> just be aware that when you move between spaces, um, mentally sometimes there's a lag. So give yourself a chance to, to compose before you go and speak to your kids or uh, your partner or whoever's living at home yeah. with you. Um, but yeah, so this is a pioneering Ooh. event. We're very excited with Extremely. it. Extremely. Um, extremely exciting. Um, we're learning as we go at this point. Uh, it's the first time for both of us, and it's the first time for the Pepper team as a whole. Um, so we're hoping that the next two days will be a great learning experience, and we hope you enjoy the next two days. Um, we are happy that you're on this journey with us, and all 300 of you are joining us in this conference. It's really amazing. Yeah. It is great. And I'm seeing the chat uh, on the live stream. Thank you all for your points. Um, Subhutra, you are far too kind. Um, she says that, she, that we're total naturals. I, hopefully we will be <laughs> by the you. end of this. Um, and yeah, keep the chat going. Please keep active. Um, we want of learning and experiences on a technique and a methodology that is critical uh, for government at this time. Yeah. We're going to have a whole... Um, so uh, I'll be very happy to have him, but from different provinces, uh, just say good morning from the Eastern Cape, uh, my favorite province. I'm sorry to uh, prioritize you, but Molweni. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so San Bonani to KZN um, and all of our provinces. All of them. Limpopo, Mpumalanga, Free State. You know, everyone. Northern Cape, yep. Western Northern. Cape, Northern Cape, Western <laughs> Cape, Limpopo. Mm. Um, uh, have I forgotten anyone? Western Cape. Western Cape, we've said. But welcome, everybody. So, tech. 
just to get us officially welcomed yes. um, to this event. So, let's you know in our culture, um, when someone comes to your house or you have an event, there's always the elder that must welcome everyone. So we would then suppose that Cecilia. Uh, Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. And as you can see, I have my mask on. Yes, yes, we all have I'd our I'd like masks. to see your masks, even if it's a virtual yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. affair. It's important that we, we lead by example, by wearing... So, Sis Lindy, I'm going to invite you, if that's all right, uh, to take to the podium. Sure. I think the cameras are you there, but uh, you are welcome to welcome us. Thank you so much. <laughs> mm. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank you, Mbali, for welcoming me to come and welcome everybody else. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to acknowledge all of the participants who are here today. And in particular, I'd like to acknowledge the Deputy Minister of Finance, uh, Dr. David Masondo, who will be joining us um, soon. The Director General of the National Treasury, Mr. Dondo Mukhajane. All the MECs, the DGs, the HODs of departments and entities that are also joining us in this conference today. The Canadian Head of Cooperation in South Africa, Ms. Jennifer Cooper. Our panelists and speakers will, who will be presenting here today and tomorrow, as well as my colleagues uh, in the National Treasury, as well as in GTEC. On behalf of GTEC, I'd like to welcome you all to this online conference. Much has happened since our initial planning of the conference that was in the Drakensberg in March of last year. As we all know that when COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic took hold, everything as we knew it was disrupted in a manner we hadn't witnessed before or even understood. Okay, my mic is dropped. I don't know where mic is to help us. I hope I can still be heard. Should I wait? Apologies for that. <laughs> and for last year, and when the pandemic took hold, we were disrupted in ways that we couldn't imagine. Nevertheless, the saying that every cloud has a silver lining can also be true, and so can necessity be the mother of invention. One positive outcome of this, of, of this pandemic, whose effects we are still crippling with, is, 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 is that we now find ourselves much better equipped to make use of technology, including hosting this conference online, as we are doing today. I was just listening to the numbers that you were talking about, that we're expecting about 150, and now we've more than doubled uh, that number. We are looking at 300 upwards who are with us today. The use of conference a year later, from the comfort of their own doing, I'm not sure what you're wearing, because this is a virtual conference, but that's the joy of having technology assist us, and that is a good spin-off. reviews in national and provincial departments. To date, GTEC has commissioned and overseen close to 200 spending reviews. The skills being developed will also serve us well as we move into an era of zero-based budgeting. I'd like to commend the GTEC Public Expenditure and Policy Analysis Team, PEPA for short, we call them PEPA.
to the good work that has been produced by this dedicated and passionate team of officials and technical advisors. At the helm of this team is, is Ms. Ronette Engela, who you'll also hear from a little bit later this morning. This work has been made possible by funding provided by the National Treasury, as well as funding from international donor part, uh, partners. At this point, I'd like to really express GTEx and indeed the South African government's deep appreciation to our development partner, the Canadian government, for its loyal and generous support to our work since the establishment of GTEx. The spending review work at this conference would not have been possible without your support, Canada. A heartfelt thank thanks to you, Global Affairs Canada. Allow me also to co the various presentations over the next two days. This conference is an opportunity to strengthen the relationships between nations as well as among the provincial treasuries themselves. It is our hope that it will also re-establish links with academia and other institutions of learning who are interested in the outcomes thereof. I would like to urge all of you participants to use these challenges in budget delivery to be just and to be open to learn from others. And remember this is a moment of reflection, a milestone along the way towards finding savings and improving the management of public finances. May this be the beginning of much more. With that, I'd like to thank you all in the deliberations. Um, I'd like to wish you well in the deliberations of the next two days as we build up to the next Savings at Work conference and the next until the objectives of prudent government spending are met. Thank you and good luck. Thank you so much, Sis Lindy, uh, for making us feel welcome in this conference. Um, it's great to be here. All of us. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, so Sis Lindy was saying uh, about uh, the virtual and about what we wear. And I was just thinking, you know, Bali, last night I had to dust off my shoes. I had to polish them. I'm sorry if you can see my shoes. Um, uh, trousers, formal trousers. How many of us, I'm sure, at home don't have to wear. <laughs> it's just the top part that matters. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, we are getting used to this new world. Um, just wanting to check, uh, we are scheduled to get an input from our Deputy Minister who will be joining us a little bit later, and there's a, a scheduling. We might be talking to our DG depending on the timing, but I will wait for a signal from the team. Um, and in the interim, oh, okay. Um, of getting a signal from the team. Uh, we're actually going to adjust our program a little bit, um, which is the nature of things. Yeah. It's the savings at work way. It's the spending review way. We roll with uh, what comes our way. And don't worry about the timing that you see on your program, everyone. Um, that you have a tea break, that you have a lunch break, and that we finish um, at the end of today in the time. Years, um, with some real uh, challenging topics that we are going to be looking at. So um, we're going to now go to Sis Roro, uh, Renette Engele, um, the pioneer in our context of the spending review. She's going to chastise me as soon as she gets the mic. Um, but uh, <laughs> sorry about those words, Renette. But um, you are so welcome, and we are really looking forward to hearing a little bit about the spending review journey. Um, so uh, if you're technically I'm comfortable, up. Renette, even if you're not, you're now on <laughs> the screen. Go. So uh, Keep it going. Keep it going. And uh, let's, let's give a round of applause to Renette as she starts her input. Um, it just feels appropriate, Renette. You've done a hell of a lot to get oh, us here. Really Thank you has. so much. Renette. <laughs> Um, and uh, thank you, Jeremy and Mbali. Um, uh, I remember what you said. We'll have a little chat. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, no, it's perfect. No problems. And, um, and thank you very much for the introduction. Um, thank you for being here. But also, good morning to everyone. And I know you've been welcomed. But I really f have the, the, the urge to, to ask, to, to, to talk about my view of how glad I am that you are here. I am 
actually ecstatic <laughs> that we are at 350 people. That is quite a turnout, and I'm, I'm very privileged that you guys uh, are all here. Um, I, I would like to say welcome to all of you across the country. I've been watching your names come up on the email feed, on my, on my email feed, and um, I notice, I recognize the names, and to everybody that we've trained, you really are very welcome. I'm so sorry that we can't be physically together. I feel like hugging each one of you and congratulating you on the hard and the good work that you did. I know that you got your certificates. I know that there were some awards. We're going to show some photos, but also, um, the reality is that we can't be together and that we cope with what we're dealing with right now. So I, I want to welcome working proactive family of spending review costing people. You welcome to join this set of civil servants, and even the gate crashes, you're also welcome. I like that. If people want to gate crash an event, you're welcome to do that. So let's, um, let's think about these two days. And I, I need to start off by saying, I think I've introduced myself a number of times as somebody who ended up in government by mistake. I really didn't plan this. 23 years later, it's like, whew, what happened here? But I think I am gripped by the complexity of government. I am um, the question about why we, despite years and years of planning, many strategic sessions, et cetera, et cetera, that keeps me up at night. And I cannot stop thinking of what we need to do to build this country. And I know that I share this passion with just about every one of you here today. Um, I have seen you working late at night during our training sessions. Um, I've seen you sitting there in front of the computer, playing with data, trying to get patents, eight, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. Um, I take my hat off for that. Of course, Sunita Budram, you still have the record for the 12 o'clock time. But what is unique about this approach? That it really grabs the spirit of civil servants. And I want to indulge a little bit around the methodology. Um, please allow me to just talk a little bit about the methodology over the past seven, eight years. I think that um, Jeremy and Mbali have highlight cornerstones, which is to adapt. But you only adapt if you're listening well. And I will, I will illustrate that to people. We started in 2013 with the spending reviews, with an awareness of a failure, um, that in government we plan and we plan and we have strategic sessions and we have lots of thinking and policy spaces, and often our university training um, is focused on these aspects. But we are really bad in government at implementation. The actual doing part falls apart. We do not have clear and well-developed theories of change and with logical links between the activities, the output, and the ultimate outcomes that we want to have. We do not know how to measure our success and failures, and our assessment of the resource allocations that are, that are necessary is often at a very high level, and we do not bring in the complexities of the real world into that assessments. And of course, these problems that by our constitutional setup, where the policy development sphere and the implementation of policy happens in another sphere. The accountability lines are blurred and convoluted. When we started the spending reviews, we were, of course, broadly interested in probing value for money and understanding efficiency and effectiveness. But it very soon became apparent to us that we need to link these expenditure trends to a detailed understanding of policy and program logic and the placemat that you see here behind me was a result of it. It was obviously not born like this immediately, but it grew over the years. The <laughs> it's a 
officials to probe the articulation between policy goals and budget needs from a unique perspective. We use the readily available data in government accounting systems. For those that are in government, you understand about BAS and Purcell, and we're going for loges next year. Ach, this year, we're busy starting to probe the loges processes. And in a series of systemized steps, we are able to understand expenditure and cost drivers. These expenditure analysis inform complicated cost models that anticipate different spending scenarios and the impact of delivery of such scenarios. That's why this process is now used by National Treasury in, in understanding and, and developing the budget of, of 2020, and we're going ahead with the process in 2021. We have a robust monitoring system that we've developed that now provide disaggregated information and tracks performances at input activity and output levels. This is needed for better managerial decision making. We cannot assess performance of a specific manager if we do not have the information linked to that managerial space. We are now able to make necessary and critical changes in specific implementation programs. in greater detail. We are able to deal with efficiency and effectiveness in a more systematic way. We are now able, because of this detail that we have, to allocate resources to activities that lead to desired outcomes. We now are able to say costing is part of the policy development process, and here are some of the methodologies with which to do this. We have full cost of policy initiatives and implementation programs, that is now possible for us, and whether they are even affordable, and how can they be made more affordable. We have done some studies um, that showed the two things in our scenarios. You can save nine billion rands. So it's possible to look at big plans and to say, here is the costing ideas, but let's do it in slightly different ways. We still want the same outcome, we still want to achieve the same policy goal, but here are scenarios about how to do it differently. Fortunately, at the moment, in the, in the current constrained fiscal environment, the spending reviews will, of necessity, have to propose spending reductions and program redesigns. This will necessarily lead to the closure of some non-core and redundant programs. We've not been good in this government where we need to apply this methodology to be able to say these are the types of programs that need to be closed. Government will have to recognize that there are no holy cows to finding savings and allowing for re improving efficiency and effectiveness and making some real proposals on savings and cuts are, I think, the reasons dedic
give me time, I'll deal with it. <laughs> so we've done an extensive amount of work. During the training sessions, part of the requirements is that each person have to produce a spending review, um, deal with data, tell us what are the patterns, explain to us what you see. And in the latest iteration of our methodological improvements, um, we now ended up with a position where um, we were able to add an additional component which allows us to see uh, um, an understanding of how you as a bureaucrat can make some real decisions about what to do with the information out of these spending reviews. With the onset of COVID, a week before the previous conference planned last year, we had to cancel. But, you know, we pivoted, as um, Jeremy mentions. We pivoted and we now have this online conference. We pivoted our training and our, and our learning and we now have an online training and, 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 and support course for people. So, what I'm trying to outline for you is that myself and the, and the costing team, the people that, that, that you've met over the years working with this work, we embrace renewal and the discomfort of the unknown. Our methodology has adapted over the years to your questions. For those of you that have done training with us, you know that we always say that real learning happens on the edge of discomfort. I hope that you will join me in the next two days in a slightly uncomfortable but exciting journey of sharing and understanding, learning and growing. Please stay with us. Enjoy the presentations, enjoy the interactions, go and look at the infographics. We are very proud of the, of the number of infographics that we have developed on, on the spending reviews. And I'll see you on Friday, and hopefully with enlarged minds. Looking forward to the two days ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Renette. Uh, the pi our pioneering leader in, in spending reviews. Um, I would love it if you stayed with us, but I think you can relax in the, in the lounge. Slow lounge. In the slow lounge. <laughs> <laughs> or in your case, the fast lounge. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Um, you know, Renette, this uh, point that you make, uh, incredible databases we have at our disposal to mine for information is such an important point. And it speaks to our theme for the day, which is the evidence for savings. And you'll see um, when we take you through the program a bit later, uh, a little bit more about uh, how that plays out. Um, at this stage in our program, uh, Mbali, uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, it's the first time we're doing this. So, and it's a hybrid model. So um, we should be uh, moving to our political principal, uh, our deputy minister, Dr. David Masondo, and let me just say something about our political and uh, uh, administrative leads. Yes. Mbali, I was just looking at their bios, and I'm encouraging you all to look at the speaker tab on your app and read a little bit about um, the bios of uh, our Deputy Minister and DG. Yes. Both of them are passionate about education. I didn't realize that they were both lecturers. Oh. Yes. Um, so I think this will be right in line with, uh, apart from their, their day jobs, but the passion <laughs> which drives them, yeah. which is around education. Yeah. Um, it's certainly a, a big thing in, in, in our country is how we build capability to address the developmental challenges that we currently face. And share. And share, of course. Yeah, what is, what is the worst? Precisely. Of? We're starting to speak uh, big <laughs> things now. Mbali. Big, big things. Yeah, okay. Um, so uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, yeah, please join me uh, if this is going to work. Dr. David Masondo, who will be coming in. Okay. Okay. He's, uh, he's about to join. He'll be joining us in a few minutes. We understand his diary is packed. Yeah. Um, so, Mbali, while we uh, uh, wait for him to come in, Let's just speed, because I've seen people from the Northern Cape. Are they here? I've seen uh, people from the Western Cape. I've seen people from, they call it sunny Gauteng. It is sunny out there. Um, KZN, 
has been saying hi. Uh, um, let's see what else we've got in the chat. Please, oh, oh, all of you, join us in looking at this chat. Um, yeah, part of this experience with us. Are you finding? Okay, so we, we are, our, our deputy minister is getting uh, close. Um, you'll see, have a look at, uh, at, the, at the chat. So we get nice updates there as well. Great, uh, some responses to Wilson, who many of you won't know, but he is one of the service providers putting, helping us to put this together. He's the, the, he's the guy behind the app. Yeah. Um, so David Wilson will come in with some pro tips, which is great. Thank you, David. Keep on bringing those in. Um, and uh, uh, keep on staying live in the chat with us. I would like to see from other, do we have anybody from Limpopo or Mpumalanga? Um, Zandi Cape, we are going to be seeing you uh, tomorrow. Yes. I can't wait. They've got such a great topic. Uh, Zandi and Feroza from the Northern Cape, uh, two of. I remember. I remember you both very clearly from, from our training. training. <laughs> indeed. Um, Gauteng, Gauteng, Gauteng. Uh, Western Cape was also coming through. Uh, see, some people saying hi from. Uh, some of the other prov provinces. Um, I hope you're getting a uh, app out there. Um, keep on trying it out. It's really uh, an exciting and I think in some ways groundbreaking opportunity for us to start to experience hybrid conferences yes. of this nature. I mean, um, this is the way forward. Yeah. Um, and what better way than to start now? And here we are. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, we, we, can, we can only go forward and oh, we've we got to embrace this. Got to um, embrace even it. me, who, I re uh, you know, a colleague of mine said in 2019 that she was going to a conference on Zoom. You need others' presence for the creative spark to happen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, look at us now. Um, they were onto something at that time. They were onto something, and humans are so innovative, which you'll see in the um, in the networking lounge um, when you get to that. Ah, we've got. Someone from Limpopo, Molakadi, welcome. Welcome. And we've Hadi. got uh, David Savage from a cold and wet Cape Town. Uh, David, who's the head of the provincial trip, to have you on this. Um, so you are so welcome. welcome. And the whole of your team, hopefully, uh, are interested in this as well. So it's great to have Cape Town, Western Cape, uh, Limpopo. I'm still waiting for Mpumalanga. I'm still waiting for Free State, uh, Eastern Cape. Coming. Are they coming? Will you speak to your people? I speed dial. Okay, okay, great. Um, ah, we have someone from the Northwest. I hope you're following the chat uh, with us. Kitso. Mosilanyane, you are. Right. The nice thing, actually. Okay, so, sorry Mbali, you, you know, one of the things that I'm not used to is getting a voice in my head uh, from the technicals. Not um, used to? N well, voices in my head I'm used <laughs> to, yes. But we're going to now move to um, uh, our uh, presentation from the Deputy Minister of National Treasury. Oh, um, we are so uh, pleased and privileged to have you, sir. Um, uh, the floor is yours. Let's welcome uh, Deputy Minister. Nipakopa, the Director General of Treasury and his colleagues, the uh, Director General of the National School of uh, Government, Utsari uh, Naweni, the Director General Acting Head of uh, GTEC, uh, Ms. Lindy Wenrela, uh, Houting uh, MEC, uh, always a uh, pleasure to have you in main of uh, attended uh, MEC Nomantun Komo Rale Hoko, 
the HOD of uh, KZN. Uh, she's new from the box, I understand. Uh, Western Cape Treasury, uh, Mr. David Savage. Uh, uh, colleagues from Land Bank, uh, CETA, uh, Ms. Uh, Pamela. Our esteemed panelists, um, Ms. Tbilisi uh, Lechana, Pem Pago, Amanda Jitsing, and our special guests and all participants. Uh, good morning and thanks for the opportunity to address this um, important uh, government spending review conference. I want to congratulate GTEC for hosting this conference and the officials from National Treasury and the various line departments and provincial treasuries for being part of this occasion. And find ways to do services efficiently that will cut areas of spending that are not delivering for the public. This is something we all know, but I think it's important to contextualize on a more sustainable footing. The skills you are learning, the skills we are all learning are going to be crucial to policy making in the medium term. And I think it's worth explaining why I think so. It is no secret that South Africa has serious economic challenges. Amongst the most of this is that we are struggling to stabilize public debt. This is a problem that emerged before COVID 19 and it has its roots in the large structural gap that we have between the, the tax revenue on the one hand and on the other hand government spending commitments serious as this was before it has obviously become even more challenging now one of the strategies we tried to close the gap between spending and revenue was to try to increase taxes, which even included raising VAT. But as we have argued in the budget review, this has not really, economic growth has continued to fall, which has meant that tax revenues kept coming than we expected. In fact, we have now have to worry that raising taxes may even contribute to the growth slowdown, which is why this year's budget offered some tax relief. Some of you who might have uh, come across what is called the Laffa curve, which was developed by Arthur Laffa, one economist, who was trying to show tax rates and tax revenue, that as you increase the um, tax rates, you will uh, get some revenue, but as you go on in increasing your tax rates, you will reach a tipping point, which um, makes undermines your tax revenue in that economic agents will start finding it irrational to invest, to engage in economic activities because they know that their income will be eaten up by larger tax rates. So there's a limit to which, uh, on what you can do from the tax side. You can't just keep on increasing tax because there's a tipping point as the Lafa curve is uh, widely demonstrated. Because we're not able to increase tax revenue, even the modest increases 
in spending, which had been budgeting for a larger and a larger deficit, more and more borrowing. happening, when you still need to borrow more and more, you lose credibility in the capital markets, and you have to pay higher interest rates when you borrow. That's what the downgrades of our credit rating reflected. Buyers of our South African debt were worried that we may be overextending ourselves. And the truth is, we were over. This is the reason we decided in 2019 that much more needed to be done to consolidate spending and to make sure that spending was aligned with performance of the economy and with what that the budgets of 20. 19 and 2020 in, introduced measures to slow the rate I want to emphasize that this COVID-19, so COVID was not the cause, COVID exacerbated our situations and this, we tried to undertake certain measures to rein in. It was where we were in 2019, even in 2018. But of course, as I already said, COVID has really battered our public finances. The recession means that taxes are much lower than we would have been. And of course, we have had to spend a lot of money on supporting the economy and the households. It is true that high commodity prices have help us bring in more revenue than we projected in the supplementary budget last year, but we are still far, far below where we thought we would be when we presented the budget in February 2020. I make all these points because it's important to understand the difficult decisions we took in the budget last year, and this year we, we were not because we like to make life difficult for yourself or anyone. We took these decisions because we had to get our financial house in order. If we don't do that, we'll have, we'll, we'll have even down the line and it will be Besides, all the debt we have accumulated already, combined with big deficits every year, is waning down on the economy and making it hard to grow. It also means that more and more of our tax revenue will be going to paying debt service costs, reducing the port that is delivery and building infrastructure. The bottom line is that to get out of this very tough situation, we are going to have to spend less than we probably want to spend to respond to all the social and developmental needs we have. That is the only way to avoid
quality is very high and the insight they offer is very profound. They just show how much we can learn from our database analytical capabilities very well. There have been a couple of reports, for example, on the cost government in cases. premium being paid on these leases was about 45%. Shocking indeed. Extrapolating to the full lease portfolio, that means of the 3 billion that was being paid to the lease office accommodation in 2015, as much as 700 million might have been saved if the rents have been at a much one of the officials on the possible measure between NSG and the P sector, the public sector sector, the review found that the 2020 MTF, the NSG will spend 350 uh, P sector, that is the public sector sector, will spend 180 million on similar functions. This spending reviews estimate that of the combined projected expenditure, a measure of uh, NSG and the PSC could They've got different, um, as the legislative mandate is concerned, but I do think that we do need to reflect on this, on how we can work together in a manner that save costs in different ways. I think this example, as I said, show how much potential there is for spending reviews of the kind you are doing ways to reduce the cost of delivering public services. That is an absolute critical task because of all the challenges we face, and it's going to be up to officials like you to help and guide government towards a more sustainable financial footing. If we are to succeed in the task of rebuilding a state that can deliver, that can do so sustainably, officials to become increasingly strategic and innovative about what to prioritize and what to deprioritize, how to deliver efficiently and how to hold people accountable to higher standards. I really want to congratulate you once more on this initiative and in your deliberations. Thank you for it. and prepare nice documents. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's count where the money goes. Yes. We need to get the skills to count where the money is going so that we can look for areas of inefficiency, get that money out of those inefficient areas and allocate them to where we really need to because we want to spend better. Yeah. We want to borrow less. Yes. We want to get out of this corner. Um, and uh, certainly having the skills to generate the evidence for decisions